It's Patrick, Patrick Vitature here, and I'm glad to be talking about adversity and uh, in the context of businesses that are built to last. This is probably episode three. I hope you are subscribed and you will follow through. The first two were interesting. I hope this is just as interesting. Lately, many of us have been caught up in this global pandemic called COVID-19. About just over a year ago, news broke that there was COVID or coronavirus in Wuhan and people had this terrible flu and people were succumbing to death. There was a bit of panic, a bit of anxiety, but we thought that must be somewhere very far away. None of us had been to Wuhan and we thought the problem would stay there. This did we know that the problem was coming and coming fast. In fact, my wife, my daughter, my son were going to visit my other daughter, my youngest daughter, in the United States sometime in February. And we heard about this, but it was okay. They are going to fly through Europe and connect. She was at the university, and we hadn't been. So I stayed behind in Kampala with my son, my middle son, Trevor. And uh, we thought this is something that was passing by. We will watch it on TV and it ends. Little did we know, a few weeks later, many countries were shutting down. It had hit Italy hard. It was coming through Europe, Spain, UK, and Africa now was panicking. And most of the world, the Western world, was saying, if it comes to Africa, we're going to start dropping like flies on the street. It became scary. Fortunately, our president responded quickly, got the attention of the country, and told us what was going to happen. He said, we were at war. And when you're at war, you stop everything. You stand still and listen to where the enemy is. I remember, because we were all glued, listening to the old man, and he had us attentively, like he's talking to his children. We listened very carefully, and probably that's what has helped preserve us during this period of one year where so many people have lost lives. Unfortunately, also, we have lost over 300 lives in Uganda. 300 too many. They missed out because there was no vaccine. And just by one year, may their souls rest in peace. However, those who have survived, we all went through a period of adversity. We didn't know what was coming. This COVID has hit us and hit us economically in ways we did not expect. We went into a very hard lockdown. People thought it was draconian. It began with Kiboko, where there was whipping by the police and security people until the president intervened and said, no more of that. But then we had fallen in line. Everybody knew what it meant and we understood what COVID meant. We understood what the curfew meant. So these are some of the challenges we had. But the biggest problem was economically. People's businesses suffered. So many people just lost their jobs, lost their income. And, a li and people whose livelihood was hand to mouth, they make money for the day, not for the week, not for the months. Some of us had saved a bit of money, but we, could, we were burning that cash very fast trying to sustain our people. So it affected very many people. And let's face it, today India is in a crisis. More than 315,000 people got COVID in one day in the last 24 hours. That's a scary number. Is this the second wave? Would a wave like this come to Africa? What would it do to us? It would be debilitating. So, some of us may survive physically, if you're careful, and now that we understand how the disease is being transmitted, we should be, we must be careful. But economically, how do you survive? Many of us don't have enough savings. Whatever we have now and we're earning from our little businesses, we need, because we live hand to mouth largely. People's livelihoods is at stake. Very many people who had moved out of poverty, real poverty, have been pushed back into poverty. Many people have gone back to their villages, have gone back to peasant farming, so they have food and they're safe. Are we going to do that again? What were the lessons out of this one year of COVID? One thing is, we have to manage our money much better. You must be a better manager of the little money you have. However much it is, consider it as little money. Manage your expenses. Spend only on what you need, not on what you want. Otherwise, you'll end up losing what you need. So focus on what you need and put money aside. Our young children lost almost a year of not going to school. Slowly, we're trying to go back to normalcy, and we're hoping the kids will go back to school. They'll catch up. When you are faced with a war or a pandemic like this, losing a year or two or three doesn't matter. Staying alive is the most important. Having something to eat, keeping together as a family unit, that's so much more important. So let's not lose focus. 
especially the businesses that are still closed down, they are feeling this injustice. Other businesses are thriving. They began picking up and others are closed and they're feeling they've been let down. But if the government feels this is the only way to keep the SOP, the standard operating procedures in place, so be it. But whatever we've got, let's manage our cash, our cash flow very carefully. You need to be frugal with your money. Whatever you're spending was, adjust it. Keep some money. We don't know how long we're going to a period again, or, or, a, or a dark period like we went through when, with the lockdown. So it is important we build robust systems around ourselves. What you can get without having to pay, try and do. Whatever expenditure you don't need to make, control it. Whatever income you can make, work twice as hard to make it now, but put some money aside. Many people are caught offside, or with the pants down, so to speak. Don't let that happen again. If there's one lesson we've learned, we need to have some savings, some money for that rainy day. We talk about it, and we always feel the banks just want our savings, but it's a reality. That rainy day will come. I'm not asking for it to come, it will come. Even the churches were pushed back. The religious leaders were feeling the heat. So it's not an easy thing to go through life, and you don't know when a wind of adversity is coming your way. You've got to be resilient, you've got to prepare for the worst, and hope for the best. I sincerely hope the worst of this COVID pandemic is behind us in Uganda. Indeed, the vaccine has come, but there are variants out there that are quite strong. And this disease will mutate, it will keep changing. So I urge you to be careful, be vigilant, help one another. Let us have Ubuntu, this human thing, humane thing that binds us together. Where we, the village used to raise a child. We had all become, everybody minds his own business, especially in the city. We've got to look out for one another. We've got to see that criminality stays under the radar or off completely. I hope the worst is behind us. Good luck and God bless. Hello, my name is Patrick, Patrick Bitaturi. Um, I'd like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on the social media platforms. I'm going to be doing a series on businesses that are built to last. That's an easy thing to say, it's not an easy thing to do. Let's walk this walk together and I try to guide you so that you can build businesses that will last. Hopefully intergenerational businesses.